Here we go. <laughs> Hi guys. You hear me okay? You can see me okay? The plushie. Yeah, this is definitely my microphone. We had to put the cute little bear on. <laughs> I also have another plushie for us today. Um, since boundaries, they can be like this or they can be like this so we'll use this to indicate certain things i thought it would be fun i like using it but normally i'm like this so i want to get you guys like this in your energy and with your connections that is my goal so let me go ahead and turn this down i'll still keep it a little bit going because i i love to talk while i'm hearing frequency or nature sounds it just helps my mind be zen hi <laughs> a little curls trying to come out fairy problem okay so my name is gabrielle hello hello i've been a part of this discord for a while i did take a little break but i came back and this is my first class back i would say this is kind of like my first official official last time i taught beverage magic which was really fun but i want to dive deeper into things that i am um, crazy passionate for which is self-development uh i hold a lot of wisdom when it comes to this and it is personally in my journey the thing that i love to devour i'm always about trying to be the best version that i can be and working with the mindset to achieve that first class ever well welcome i love that <laughs> and i love that it's mine but i want to empower you guys through boundaries the pathway to personal power a little bit about me is i'm an intuitive mentor i'm highly clairsentient um so i work very very well with energy uh, an energy that comes through me. So I've really had to learn how to transmute things around me, whether it comes from other people's emotions to my own emotions, to the collective emotions, to channeling. <laughs> it's, it's a lot and it can be very overwhelming. And I know that a lot of us are clairsentient beings. We just don't really know how to navigate that. So, and one of the tools is boundaries. Um, so throughout my journey in the Discord, I'll be able to share a lot of cool tools and insights um, as well as on my YouTube. So I already told you that I love to grow and I love to learn. Um, and my passion is really emotional healing, mastering clairsentience, universal guidance. So how the universe speaks to you and through you. Uh, the throat chakra activation. I love getting your voice to shine. Um, and awakening to your power and collective message. So the overview of the course, what are boundaries? Why are boundaries so important? Boundary conditioning, how to implement boundaries in your life. What are the benefits of having boundaries and energetic benefits? Throughout this, um, I did kind of give all the information here, but I just want to make it clear that there will be some channeling coming through um, for this class. I Yeah, and I just got chills. <laughs> they are so ready for this class because I feel like, you know, we're going through this path and boundaries is one of the biggest things for energetic protection. And I know personally in my experience with learning boundaries, it's an art. You know, I'm not even perfected in it but I've done a lot of work with it to where I'm able to teach you and get you started on certain things as well. So what are boundaries? Boundaries are the invisible lines we draw around ourselves to protect our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. They define what is acceptable and unacceptable in our interactions with others, guiding how we allow others to treat us and how we respond to them. Serving as personal limits, boundaries are essential for maintaining healthy relationships, fostering mutual respect, and promoting emotional and psychological balance. They help us establish healthy relationships, maintain self-respect, and preserve our sense of aut autonomy and identity, ultimately serving as a means of self-care and self-protection. Now, just reading this on what are boundaries, how many are just kind of like, ooh. <laughs> Oh, goodness, maybe I don't have this quite down. And, it, and and that's like totally okay, right? Like in all of our connections, it is so incredibly important to hold authenticity when it comes to our boundaries. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But if we don't know our personal limits and we don't know how to present ourselves in front of people and hold those boundaries, it's just so easy to get run over, over and over and over and over. And I'm telling you over and over because <laughs> I have been there and it's, it's not the best. And it happens to a lot of light workers. We're going to figure this out. Why are boundaries important? 
boundaries have had a narrative of being selfish, controlling, and is fear-induced stemming from the thought of judgment. Yes. Okay, I used to feel really bad about having boundaries or even just like wanting to speak up. Like someone could just literally be verbally abusing me back in the day and I would just... And then how many of you, okay, you were in an interaction, but then later on you got home and then you replayed the scenario and you were like, I could have said that a little bit differently. Has anybody been through that? Because I definitely have, yes. <laughs> And it is the worst feeling because you're like, well, I, I should have said this because that's how I feel. Okay, well, we need to get quicker and quicker and quicker with that. So when we are in situations like that, it is just natural. It is natural to have that boundary there. We don't have to think about it later. We already know. We already know what we're going to accept in our energetic field because our energy is very sacred okay and, and that's something we need to brain or wash ourselves with like if you have paper write it down my energy is sacred and when you start understanding that on a very deep level you won't let people run you over again you won't let those situations happen you won't be going home and going over it because that's just a waste of energy at that point you know it's done it's done and over with but yet now we're replaying it and now we're trying to that person can't hear you <laughs> See, a lot of you guys can relate. Uh, yeah, prepare for the mirror before. I've done that, yes. Or like you're driving, you're like, oh, what about if this situation happens? And it's like, okay, we need to know. I'm not going to prejudge this situation. So why boundaries are important is it creates empowerment. Setting and enforcing boundaries empowers you to take control of your life and assert your needs and preferences in various situations leading to increased confidence and self-esteem. There is nothing like if somebody is overstepping, be like, no. I'm sorry, like you're gonna learn my favorite word is no, because it was the word that I could never use growing, could never use. Um, they also want me to point out to you guys, so if you notice my screen flicker, uh, this only happens when I'm channeling, so they're like saying hi. <laughs> I just thought I should share that with you. Um, like I stream and everything and it never does this except when I'm like giving information or doing readings for people. So if you see that, it's like confirmation. Uh, they're like, hi, how are you? <laughs> But yeah, there, there is nothing like being able to be set in your boundaries and being able to say that doesn't work for me or that makes me uncomfortable. You know, if you're in a situation where somebody is just like pushing you, hey, verbally pushing you and you just don't say anything, it feels suffocating. And I'm sure a lot of you guys understand that because we've all been put in a situation where it's very uncomfortable, but yet we put their needs before ours. And it's like, why? Why? Well, it's because we need to find that confidence also in our boundaries. Personal growth. Establishing boundaries encourages personal growth and development by promoting self-awareness, assertiveness, and healthy communication skills. There's nothing wrong with being assertive. You know, there's this narrative that, uh, again, you're selfish, you're controlling, or like spiritual people can't be assertive. You're love and light. Well, me being assertive is love and light. Hi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me protecting myself is love and light for myself. So, hey, Dobie. Being selfish is a necessity. It is about you. Like, at the end of the day, it is about you and your comfort and your where you want to go in your journey. And it, too, mu too many of the times we're just like, oh, but that's going to make them feel bad. Who cares? That's your problem. Not my problem. Your problem. <laughs> I don't know. You see, like, I get so, like, clean cut with this stuff. Like, I don't mess around. Like, when it comes to my energy, when it comes to what I feel, like, I'm not going to put up with it. I go from this to the hi, because I have two sides. I have the side where I'm protective of my energy because I can feel you. I can feel your intention. And I'm going to listen to that intuition. So how many of you, you know, your intuition is telling you, yeah, that doesn't feel right to me. But yet you show up. You still show up. Because why? You're thinking about what Jonathan wants. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, mm, we need to get a little better with that. So on to the next one, emotional balance. Not allowing your boundaries to be compromised helps create a healthy flow in your emotions. Oftentimes resentment is an indication your boundaries have, have been crossed. So like how many of you guys have been around a friend and you've been feeling this itch for like months like that they did, but yet months later, you're still holding on to that. And you're just like, you just irk me, but yet I'm still hanging out with you. Well, that's your fault because we're not speaking. We're not speaking our boundaries. How are people supposed to know our boundaries if we don't speak them? But yet we're fear, we're fearful. We're fearful of the judgment. You have to communicate y'all. So true. It, and, and it's so hard. So 
I will literally tell you guys, the hardest thing here is learning communication, but yet it is the biggest thing, the biggest thing you need. And you get so scared. We're like, oh, what if they don't approve? Okay, they don't. And, and it's hard. It's hard to get to that mindset. Okay, but whatever is for you is for you. And what, it, what isn't, isn't. And it's all in love. It's all in learning. So like you even putting up a boundary for that person and say that person is not receptive to it and you know you guys go separate ways. That person who wasn't receptive also gets to learn from that experience just as much as you get to learn because you just empowered yourself further. You just said, I chose me. Is that a is that an L? No. That is telling me I did that. So the emotional balance part is incredibly important. I don't know if I read it. Not allowing your boundaries to be compromised helps create a healthy flow in your emotions. Yeah, oftentimes resentment. Yes. Okay, okay. okay. There's something else about emotional balance. So um, anxiety, you know, when you guys go into say a gathering or a place and you get anxiety before you're emotionally imbalanced because you've probably been into multiple scenarios of the same thing where your boundaries were crossed. So you're already emitting that energy going in because we don't have groundness in our boundary and who we are because it also stems down to who we are, what our worth is, what, what do we think our worth is, our self-care, our self-love, how are we treating ourselves? Why are we allowing people to treat us the way that we treat ourselves? Let's reflect. What is that mirror showing us? How are they treating us? Also, how can I take that and alchemize that? Because maybe I'm, I'm doing that to myself somewhere in my life and I need to check it. Um, how does this work with our parents if we live with them? Oh, such a good question. I'm actually going to be getting to this. So we're going to hold off on that because I will personally say that is one of the biggest things I had to work on. And I will say family is the hardest, in my personal opinion, for boundaries. So we're definitely going to dive deeper into that one. I've been working on boundaries for a while. And when I started setting them with peeps who I've known for a long time and they did not like it at all, I don't know how to navigate that really. It's it's really hard too because, yeah, and I just got chills. So these people have known you in a different version of yourself and we've allowed them to go over these boundaries, but it's not truly our fault until we come to an awareness of what we do deserve, right? So these people are holding on to a version of you where they could just trample over you in their negative, negative projection. So of course, when you're reflecting that back to them, they're now thinking, oh, she thinks she's better. What got into her? You know, it's just a lot of ego that goes into it. But honestly, we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. Like <laughs> further down the line, this is just the beginning. I, I swear we're going to get into this because we need to talk about the work lifestyle. We need to talk about the family lifestyle, the relationship lifestyle, because they're all so different. Like boundaries is an art. It is an art form. And it, in every single one of those categories, they're completely different. You have to approach them so differently, but yet you have to come across in the same way. Okay, I have this boundary. I don't like people in my face. Okay, well that goes across the board, right? Well, unless your partner, you're like, I wanna kiss you. You know, that's different. You see what I'm saying? So like, it's different in every category. We'll get there. Our managers at work covering that. We're gonna get there. So healthy relationships, boundaries are essential for fostering healthy relationships by establishing clear guidelines for behavior, communication, and interaction. And right now, if you guys have paper too, I would suggest writing down what boundaries are these people uh, crossing? And then we can kind of dive deeper into that specific, that specific one. Okay, so we're going to get into boundary conditioning, which kind of goes into the work environments and personal relationships. So the reasons why we are trained not to have boundaries are things like personal relationships, media, school and work environments. So for example, for your personal relationships, guilt tripping, invalidation, gaslighting overstepping, silencing, and shaming. And then you also get to see others in their unhealthy relationships. I can relate to all those. Yes, peer pressure. I just got, yes. We're gonna talk about this one because peer pressure, in my personal experience, was the worst when it came to no. So like there was a lot of situations like with other gentlemen where they peer pressured me into certain things and I could not say no. I would say, well, I did say no. Uh, no, but then it just kept being forced and forced, but I didn't have assertiveness. I should have been like, no. And that show just walked out, called somebody, but instead I allowed them to push me into certain situations because my boundaries weren't firm. I go, yes, now, no. I don't give a fuck, literally. It just be like that. It has to be like that. If not, you are literally disrupting your peace every time. 
if you go to a friend, yes, I'll go. But then you're like, no, actually, I don't want to go, but I'm just going to make her happy. You are disrupting your peace. You just allowed your energy to leak. That's... That's how like delicate it is. Um, so the media, lots of our content that we watch, for example, filmmaking shows people, um, people pleasing tendencies and lack of respect towards the word no. How many times have you seen in a movie like a um, sex scene where the woman is saying no, but yet the gentleman still does it anyways? Or like, oh, come on, let's go bridal shopping. Oh, but I don't want to. And it's like the nerdy girl is just like, I don't want to. And they're like, come on, please, please, please. And then she's like, okay. Like how many films are there like that? There is a lot. <laughs> There is a lot. You are letting someone play with you, your respect, your own worth, your identity as a whole. Can't let people's emotions of peace mean more than yours. And it's so true. It is so true. But yet we are conditioned to do that. You know, how many times like, here we go. We'll dive into a little bit of parents, right? When you're growing up and they're telling you, go do this. And you're like, I don't want to do this. Well, because I said so, you're going. That's conditioning. Those little things condition you. So what part? I feel like that affects females more than men though. What do you think? What part? Also school and work environments. You are told exactly how to act in these environments and they preach conduct but why are these environments still so toxic and fear inducing you know you you get hired right i actually have to say that is false because there was a time where i hanged with the bros that was my thing and peer pressure was a damn big thing for men why do you think they call them pussy you're a pussy they go and do it because they're not pussy, right? I, I disagree with that. I think it is very even on both ends of the spectrum. I, I believe that everybody has been conditioned in some way or form. Even the toxic masculinity part of it can be very intense. It is very intense. Like I would sit there and watch these guys peer pressure each other into doing things. Oh, you're not gonna put in for fantasy? Oh, you're a bitch. Here's $20 and my piece. You know what I'm saying? Like it is, now that you put it like that, yeah, you're right, no cap. Yeah, it is so toxic. It is so toxic for women. You know, you, you have your commercials, skincare and all this stuff. If you don't do it, Oh my God, the fat. It, it's weird. It is so freaking weird. It's like, no, I just want to live here authentically. Like, I, I don't, I don't care. Now I want to talk about the school and work environments because when you first get hired, they have the code of conduct. You're sitting there, you're looking at sexual harassment videos, bullying. But how many of you, when those, in, uh, when those instances have happened, have you been like, oh, I'm not saying anything. Nope, I'm good. I'm just, I'm just going to deal with it. They don't really make it a safe environment. Like they say they do, but most of the time they don't even do anything. Wow, we'll bring you in and, and we'll talk about it. Or like you're trying to say something to your manager and it's scary. It's freaking scary. That's why like we're going to teach you boundaries here today so that even in these environments, you can do it yourself. I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to go through the, the commands. Like if you can say it, but we're going to talk about that because if we are beginning boundaries, your voice is going to be shaky. Okay. Like it just is what it is. Like even when I was starting boundaries, it's like, oh yeah, I, I don't like that. You at least took that step to create that boundary even when your voice was shaky and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger the more that you do it. Really this way, I think it's more American problems. I wouldn't even be surprised. Talk big game, but they don't do anything. They don't. You know, I remember when I was in school, I talked uh, to my principal about a teacher who was sexually harassing me. I was in a criminal justice class. Uh, I was in handcuffs and I'm a very bubbly person. You know, I I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to get it like from underneath my butt in like contortionist type style just having fun and he's recording it and he said this is like a soft porn that's not the only instance but you know i went to somebody and i said something and they said you're lying because you want out of the class and it was just because it would be harder for them to take care of the situation and to also trade me from that class and so they just said you're a liar no i'm dead ass Dead ass. That's what I'm saying. I have had so many trials when it comes to boundaries in my lifetime. Like when I tell you repeatedly and a lot of it was sexual. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like a lot of it is just in, in my personal space, like trying to infiltrate me through speaking, touching. And it just wasn't, it wasn't comfortable. It wasn't great. I really don't like the school system either. Mental health jobs talk so much about how they support it, but they really don't for real. Yep. And that's what I'm saying. This is why even in our work environments, it's not, we're not comfortable to say anything. It's just not, it doesn't create a space for us. I think what's really interesting about the mental health 
community is also how much they separate you. So if somebody comes to them about mental health, they separate themselves and isolate them and act as if they can't, they don't go through the same thing. But that that's the guideline. They can't cross that. They can't talk like we are now and being like, yo, I've gone through this. You've gone through this. Let's, let's go back and forth with this. Let's grow. Let's learn. Let's expand. It's like, isolation tactics. And I just don't agree with that. I think that's also another reason why I've really come forth about mental health and, you know, wanting to teach about it because I want to go about it a different way. I don't want to isolate. I want to relate, right? I I want to unite, but he couldn't do anything to the manager because he was one of, that's what I'm saying. It's so weird. They didn't believe me. And, And it's so weird because they probably don't believe you because no one believed them. And that's where the trauma is. That's where this can, and I'm glad we're we're talking about this because this is where the conditioning is. It, it even happens to the parents, the parents' parents, and their experiences with the jobs and whatnot. It is all collective. And here we are, we're trying to get out of that. And we are. We're awakening to it. So, and this is where our growth is going to be. My cat is like at the door. She's like, please let me in. How to implement boundaries into your life. Number one, establish your boundaries. And say hi. I thought that was my cat. <laughs> She's She's a um, okay, so if we do not have any awareness to what our boundaries even are, we got to do some inner work. Like, you know, practicing self-care, self-love is tip number three, but I feel like these kind of go hand in hand together. Like you have to establish your identity. You have to. Like you have to understand what is a yes and what is a no for me. It's authentically to me. Okay, it's not because Tiffany likes that or Tiffany does that. Now, maybe Tiffany inspires you to be like, hey, yeah, you know, that makes sense. That makes me uncomfortable as well and inspires you to do that. But we're not looking to copy other people's images, okay? We're looking to be your identity, your authenticity when it comes to boundaries. So maybe even writing down stuff like how how did this person make me feel in this situation? Do I allow that? Do I not allow that? When somebody asks me to go out and I don't want to go out, do I do it? Do I not do it? Maybe if somebody asked me to go somewhere that... I'm interested in, absolutely. You know, you gotta balance the scale. Limit exposure to toxic people. Y'all, y'all. We'd be the first one to be like, I'm drained around this person, but I'm gonna go hang out with them. And it, no. Like, and it's hard too, because like, um, uh, trying to find your name here. Gotta scroll up, gotta scroll up. Jewel, that I think it was. People are having a hard time with that, but you also have to limit your exposure because that's toxic. If they are not taking your boundaries and they're not being like, okay, well, she's growing and I'm gonna grow with her and I'm gonna see her and I'm going to allow her to grow around. No, bye. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't have time for it. You don't have time for it. Like if these people make you feel drained, if they make you feel like shit, like I'm sorry to be like that, but like literally if if you're going home and then you feel bad about yourself and you're like, man, I'm ugly or I'm not smart or why can't I do it like that? That person is not good for you. And then we also need to go inward at that point too, because we need to have some conviction in ourselves on who we are you know that's also tying into establishing your boundaries you see how this all like just kind of wraps up together in a present it is an art it is an art form that's crazy jewel that is false false i can't cut off like my friends that i've had forever yes you can i can't is not a word i can i will and i must are you coming first or are they because right now with that statement well i can but i don't want to right because it's it's the fear it's the fear of judgment it's the fear of new you know like when we're having boundaries guys and we're and we're losing people and we're setting these things in stone it's change it's the unknown it's like you know i had somebody recently who you know i cut ties with and I vibed with them so well but they tried to tell me who I was they over crossed on that boundary with trying to have conviction and they took my intention wrong but they were so convinced even when I was like that was not the intention this is exactly where I was coming from bye like I I can't I'm not going to force you to see me and if you're not seeing me in the love and light that I am and the you know the beautiful my beauty then you don't deserve to be around me because I allow people in my energy that is a reflection of my energy. That's the difference with boundaries. So if I'm gonna let people in and do their harm to me, 
then I'm, I'm harming myself. That's not spiritual hygiene, energetic hygiene, matrix level hygiene. I consider them like different because they are, you know, you have the 3D level boundaries, then you have your spiritual boundaries, your energetic boundaries. It's, it's art. Like I can't, I've started to put, have led me to realize there's no way I can still hand out with my closest group. It's been difficult, but I know it's what I have to do to evolve. Yes. Yes. Clearing out old energy allows your tribe. And that's the beautiful part about it. Like these people, if they are not up to par and I, and it's like, we're not different. We're one, right? But we are at different energetic levels. We can't, we can't fake that. If you are not there and you are not at my table, I'm like, okay, I have like the tables of disciples, right? I have 12 seats. You better be bringing some good shit to my table. And, I, and that may sound harsh, but like, it's truth. Like, that's my tribe. Like, I'm not going to allow someone who's sitting there who's envious of me who's jealous of me, who makes smart ass comments to me, sit on my table. Like why are you the devil on my shoulder? No, I only got the angels here because I am an angel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like why, why would I allow somebody to sit on my table and make me feel bad? At that point, you're self-inflicted. And we have to understand that because we are in control. We are in control we make these choices. So if you keep the person who's envious around you, you're keeping them around, that's your choice. Um, then we have practice assertiveness and clear communication. This one's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult for people just because if you have not practiced boundaries, it is uncomfortable, okay? Like when you're coming from a place of just people pleasing and just allowing people to do whatever they want around you, make you feel whatever, like doing this is going to be uncomfortable, but it's rewarding, it's incredibly rewarding. And I find when you have boundaries, you take off. Like in my development, when I learned boundaries and worked on it and worked on communication, I skyrocketed with the abilities that I was able to tap into and in the rooms that I could be in. Like I wasn't going into a group area and feeling drained anymore because I was allowing all that energy in because I was so used to having to everybody projecting and projecting their emotions onto me and taking it anyways. Now I don't do that. Now I'm able to separate and I'm allowed to go in. Am I beautiful or uh, go in, get out and I'm not drained. You know, somebody comes up to you. Hi, how are you? You know, what if I'm not in the mood to talk? Hey, sorry, I just, I can't talk right now. You know, I need some moment. Do you have social or something? I can get with you later. You know, there's other ways to just kind of navigate. You have to come first in every situation. If you don't feel like it, you don't feel like that. And it's fine. It's okay. We got a little sidetracked on that. Coming back, communication. A lot of the throat chakras are off balance, you know, if you don't have boundaries. So it is the sacral chakra, but I do find the boundaries also implement through, and it's very important because if we're practicing our boundaries, it's coming from our sacral to our third chakra, and both of them are just, can be very much a powerhouse together. If you push through it, you know, like saying no, practicing that, getting comfortable with that, and then that 1% difference, it adds up, and then later it just becomes easier. Hey, would you like to go? No, I got something I gotta do. And that's easier. And you're not feeling as like, oh, what if, what if I tell them no and like they judge me and no, like that's normally how the beginning of it is. I'm not gonna lie, but you have to push through the mental. The mental will try to play tricks on you. And I think a lot of you guys understand that because it, it's not new. You know, you wanna go do something new and your mind's like, no. Oh yeah, maybe I should do it tomorrow. That's a trick. You know what I'm saying? It is the same with boundaries. It is. It's like, should I clearly communicate this? Oh no, they're, they're gonna judge you. Th do it anyways. Do it anyways. Tell that voice that I'm, get, I'm getting my power back. <laughs> you know? Um, through a lot, I never could talk or explain anything to my grandma growing up. She thought explaining your side was talking back. So I couldn't really communicate or advocate for myself. So when I got into a relationship, I put my all in, got broke up, hurt, cheated, kept thinking I couldn't leave, comfortable and scared. I felt broken. Oh, my heart goes out to you. You know, these, the things that the universe give us to really reflect where we need to stand. And that, that is intense. What's crazy? And I want to share this with you guys. When I was younger, my dad would be like, you talk too much. Or he'd be like, shut up. And I would just be like, oh, that is one of my gifts. Your voice is spell. So the situations that you're going through it is the agenda. It is the agenda not to get you to use that voice, to use that power, to stand in your truth. My opinion when setting boundaries, accept that people may not like it. By accepting it, you won't be scared of it. I agree. 
I feel like that also goes into um, expectations. Don't hold expectations. You will get disappointed. <laughs> like, period. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to tell you how I feel. I ain't going to hold an expectation for you to understand. But it is for me. It's validation for me. I don't need your validation. But I'm giving myself validation by telling you that does not serve me. Has helped me use my voice in a way that actually benefits me. Yes. Choosing better words and conversations with other people that sometimes are difficult. Absolutely. Good for you. I adore that. It's powerful. It feels so good when you open up your throat chakra and you're just like, yeah, that's not going to work. When I was in school, my teachers always told me I talk too much. And my mom would tell me I talk too soft. Oh my gosh, so it's always something. Yeah, girl. So my name's Gabrielle, right? People call me Gabby and they say, yeah, thank God we named you Gabby because you gab all the time. I had to hear that since I was you. So I, I totally can relate and it's, it's weird. And it's like, yes, I am using my voice. I'm using my power. What's wrong with that? But we're not taught that. We're not like raised on that. Like, oh, your voice is your power, honey. Good tap in you. Good, good for you for using it. Oh, if only, if only. No, the trials got us here, but it's, it's weird. <laughs> this is gonna be hard and it's going to feel like you're all alone, but you need to go within and recognize the divinity that you are. I was such oh yes listen whatever you what what you are inwardly shines outwardly it's literally almost as simple as that y'all like it really is if if i love myself unconditionally and i understand my energy is sacred and incredible and not everyone deserves access to me i live that life i will walk that path my little guardian <laughs> all right let's move on here so i found these so i I thought this was really cool. Uh, throughout the week, I've been seeing things pop up about boundaries and I'm like, oh, okay, source, you know, you kind of want me to implement this. So Astro Babe was saying, people who lack balance, lack, it's so true. If, if you don't even know what you want, how the hell are you gonna get it? Confrontation can be uncomfortable, but not as uncomfortable as letting the tension build within you. Approach your communication with kindness and allow the universe to assist you in confronting what you need to address. You know, like, Boundaries really go into emotion. When we're not able to like process our emotions or understand how to navigate them, it's very difficult. You know, I'm just gonna come home and feel frustrated, but then I'm not gonna like confront it, understand it, and then prevent it from happening again. Most people are just like, okay, this is just what life is. I'm just gonna come home stressed after activities with people. I'm I'm just gonna be stressed over this. And they accept that. They full on think that's how life is supposed to be. It's it's a lot. Loving yourself requires you to say no to people and things that ask you to compromise on what you want. When you truly love yourself, people pleasing goes out the window. You only say yes to things that truly align. You only allow people into your life that respect you. You deserve nothing less. I feel like I'm a hype hype woman. Over. You really don't deserve anything less. You get respect or we're not talking. I have space held for me or we're not talking. You see value, or we're not talking. It's a waste of my time. It's a waste of my energy. Why, when I'm at a certain energetic level, am I then going to come down to you? No, you come meet me. <laughs> yes, she is. She's like holding the energy over here. It's so cute. She loves doing that. Say hi. Isn't that the crazy part? Like we be the first ones to like go down to that level. And it's so easy, especially when you don't have boundaries, energetic boundaries. Like it's so easy to then just go down to their level. No, I'd rather prevent that. <laughs> Honestly, I'd rather make it to where I don't feel like I ever have to around people. That's a good with boundaries. Absolutely. Probably why you're here, huh? I think she likes the warmth of the light and stuff too. She taken the light. And then I love this. I just love the no. It just makes me happy. I need some water. Woo! What are the benefits? Having boundaries. One, Amer America. <laughs> I'm from the country, guys. Emotional regulation, improved emotional well-being. So setting boundaries helps regulate emotions by creating a sense of safety and predictability in relationships, reducing anxiety and emotional instability, also aids in protecting your emotional well-being pre by preventing emotional manipulation, over-involvement, and burnout in relationships. Oh my god, if this isn't a repetition of what I had to go through, like the burnout is crazy. And if your cup is not full, it is empty, period. And But why are we like still trying to like get drops out with people who are like, oh, I'll just let you run me over one more time. It is, no, 
it's it's crazy when you like want to do something for yourself but then you end up not doing that you end up doing something for somebody else and then you come home and then you don't do the thing for yourself because then you're just drained because you just gave the little bit of energy that you had because obviously if we're in this situation where we're not taking care of ourselves we're not taking care of our energetic hygiene then you just deplete and it's a never-ending cycle and then when you just get a little bit more you're like oh i have just a tiny bit in my cup let's go see who i can go give it have you guys been in that situation it's not it's not good for us okay we're holding compassion for ourselves right because like we have to go through this we have to go through these situations of course to learn but it is never good to i guess to compromise my peace you know if i if i can't take care of myself first then nobody comes and as a light worker we have to understand that because we're just taught to give 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 but like how are we actually giving on an empty cup like have we ever like come to this conclusion this is something like i really want the light workers to listen up to because we we have gifts right but if we're not taking care of ourselves and we're giving our gifts are they in true intention are they at its most powerful peace? is it in absolute love if we don't harness that for ourselves how are we actually able to give that to others but yet we have this illusion that we are it's it's not authentic you're helping these people in an empty cup you're not authentic I i'm sorry i don't know if that's going to trigger somebody but like it has to be said because like you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of somebody else in your power empowerment having boundaries empowers individuals to take control of their lives make empowered choices and advocate for their own well-being and happiness I just, <laughs> I just heard period. I mean, that's plain and simple. Like you have to be in your power. Like this is empowering. If I don't like it. No, like even with parents. Okay. Like they're bringing up the parents now and it's hard when you do live in a house with them. I personally do myself. So I lived outside of the home. I got called back here, but one of it is even to learn boundaries. And you know, my mom would talk to me about my dad and their problems. I, d I don't, I don't want to hear about it. You know, it doesn't make me feel comfortable. It drains me and I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's got it to the point, like, I'm sorry you're going through this. I said, but you need to go and speak to somebody else because I'm not the one. I don't want to hear about it. Yes, and it is going to happen to you because you are easy to talk to. Like when you have a magnetic energy, right? And like, you're able to hold these spaces for people and you're so good at listening and giving intuitive, you know, messages and, you know, I can help guide you because I've experienced or I've seen it. These people will literally bleh, all over you. That's why these boundaries are so important because like it is literally projection. It is literally draining you. It's like, no, I, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about this. It doesn't make me happy. Yeah, I can't do it either. It's, you know, and it just happened the other day and I now have to rewire and go back and state it again. This is the problem with parents is you'll tell them, but then they'll repeat it. And it's so shit, right? It's like some will take it to heart, but then also at the same time, like we also have to understand it's, it's, you know, they have to learn that new trait about you, but we have to be persistent. We have to be persistent for them to learn if we're wanting to keep that person. You know, there's sometimes like intentional times where like you tell somebody your boundary and then they intentionally keep doing it. That's different. Whereas like, say you bring it up again, you're like, hey, I really just don't wanna talk about that. That's again, a boundary. And they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I'm trying to, but then again, like these people have the choice. We can't just like make excuses for it. They have a choice and they're trying to hold on to a past version of you and it's like no i just realized i spelled healthy wrong hail of the hail of the relation over and over yeah so what's the one you can't get rid of keeps crossing your boundary do you fight them um it's funny i just saw somebody so i saw two figures and the one person just goes so so this is like an energetic boundary obviously they're trying to cross as well like being able to hold your own space like this, okay, this person is trying, I'm sorry, please allow me to get together my thoughts at this moment. This is a test. This is a test. And this is actually a really good test for you because what's happening is they're trying to infiltrate your energetic bound. Okay, so if we can sit there and we can ignore, but also hold our frequency, understand what I'm saying? So like, if I'm ignoring somebody because I'm not, it's not a healthy relationship, but I still have to interact with them. But yet I'm still allowing their energy to leak into my energy and irritate me, 
or they frustrate me with their presence, that is an energetic balance. I have to keep my thoughts, my balance on my end. And I have to understand that they're coming from a different mindset, right? So people can only reach you at the mindset that they're at, which also makes something. I mean, I hope it doesn't come to that point. Uh, assertiveness, you know, maybe there has to be more assertiveness there. Like I'm not messing. Like, I really just need you or like, I don't want to have a connection with you or, you know, let's just do our job. Let's just do our schoolwork, you know, just creating a direction and then assertiveness with that boundary, I would say would probably be your best bet in that situation. I don't want this energy around me. It's the wildest when they say that too. No, and I will say like right now I'm dealing with a little bit of an entity problem with my parents and I've been finding that my dad will just start saying things to try and provoke me. He'll literally try to say stuff to get me mad or to be like, no, that's not true. I'm actually doing this like a reaction. And then my mom and dad feed off of each other and, and, the, and they make these weird jokes, like uncomfortable jokes, like sexual jokes. And like, it's just really weird. It's just really weird, but it's to get a reaction. And I don't allow it. Because I'm just like, you can do what you want over there, but I have an understanding that we are separate. So like, this is also for the people that live with their families as well. Like, you are separate. You are your own. Even in that household, make your energy known that it is separate. Your choices are your choices and their choices is their choices. And there is a separation. Like, I've literally been testing it. This is my battleground here. This is a battleground. So I, I use it to see how I can manipulate energy. So if I'm getting up, at a certain time, I'm going to the gym, I'm taking care of myself, my mind, body, and health, and that energy is in this house, and my energy is the strongest energy. It starts to spread. It starts to impact. It leaks. The strongest energy wins. This is what it is. So I'd rather spend the time making my energy the most potent, and my truth, and my authenticity, because somebody wearing a mask is not going to win. So you're going to go because your parents are getting on your nerves. I'd tell them, man, you have a wonderful day as well. <laughs> With entities too, even our spirit guides, yes. That's like a whole different thing to like, for real. It, and it's like, we also have to make boundaries with ourselves. You know, like, oh no, I'm gonna stick to this because I know that it's gonna be best for me in the future. That's also like a boundary. Oh, I'm not gonna partake in this because it disrupts my peace anymore. And I'm gonna promise that to myself, that's a boundary. So you see how they like leak all over? It's like, I am a boundary. All these relationships are boundaries. These environments are boundaries, like everywhere. That's why like, it's so important to have a sense of self at your home base. You gotta know what you're gonna allow in and what's gonna allow out because like, so as a clairsentient being, I know immediately when I walk into a room, who's for me, who's not. For me. Just by how they are, how their energy is, like, I just know. And I used to allow the things that I knew that was not for me still come around me. And now I'm just like, no, no, okay, that's not for me. I'm gonna go this way. And I'm not just saying for specific people, but like, just environments in general, you gotta like really start listening to your intuition and to what your body is telling you. Like it literally talks to you all the time. And if you're not listening to the energy. So healthy relationships, boundaries help establish clear expectations and guidelines for behavior, fostering healthier and more respectful relationships with others. If they don't know, they can't fix it. And if you don't, how are you supposed to be reflected? What I mean by that is when you tell somebody a boundary, right? And they're either gonna have a good response or they're gonna have a more negative response. That's gonna show you. That's gonna show you right there. <laughs> the, the universe don't lie. Like people don't lie. They'll show you, they'll show you right away. They're either gonna make you feel bad for having it or they're gonna be like, oh man, I, I never knew you know, that, and I'm gonna keep that in mind. They will show you, they will show you, but you have to see it understand it that's the hardest one accepting it you know oh man i feel bad for them no no they will go find other people in their frequency honey you're in a new era you're in your new shit like worry about yourself what do you want is that reflecting increase self-esteem setting and maintaining boundaries communicate self-respect and self-worth which can boost confidence and self-esteem oh my god oh my god like probably one all of it's important but this is a really important one if you don't have a sense of self-worth your boundaries are shit if you don't think that you are literally divinity that you are literally love that you are a creator you are 
artistic. You are incredible. Like there's so many things, right? If you don't have that sense of worth, you're allowing crap in. You want other people in your life at the 12 seats of your table to be filled with parts of you that reflect you in the best possible ways. It's not selfish to love you. It's incredible. Like, sorry, I, I can't, I can't come to the phone right now. I am like pampering myself, girl. <laughs> it's so, it's weird. Now there's many forms of self-care. Like I understand that and self-love. Just example, it's just. What do you mean, what about your higher self? Ruthless and blunt, so sometimes you have to give those ones boundaries. I mean, in my case, I love blunt because I'm very blunt myself. My bluntness is, love because i'd rather just give you the facts facts for your life <laughs> but there's a different there's ways of being aggressive with that though and i understand. it is selfish being a people pleaser let's switch it around so like isn't that funny how the narrative has been like and it really should be flipped but that's the conditioning and it's not even anybody's fault like it's literally just what we've had to see hear feel and it's like it was all a program well the program's over we're going into new earth like step up like your power is needed your power is your voice your power is your energy your essence the way you walk in a room like you don't have time for people that treat you like crap like you really just don't and when you start adopting that perspective like i literally don't have time for people who give me less than what i deserve or less than what i you know think my worth is or but it's an experience these people also mirror you they also help you grow and i understand that but they also will help you grow by setting these boundaries so like understand when you're speaking a boundary to somebody and if they take it in a negative way they're also teaching you they're also helping you grow so much deeper into being authentic in your power because i will do it over and over and over and over again and then now i'm just so confident in it that i can just stand in it and, and it's like nothing it's like yeah that's my boundary yeah that doesn't that's not right yeah no that's not me stop trying to project on me like i will literally tell people when they're projecting at me i'll be like can you stop projecting i have no chill like i will call you out like you're lying i will call you out because i know i'm like why are you lying i'm not like you're lying like don't be afraid to call people out too like they try to get away with these things and then it just disrupts your peace and i don't think so i wonder if that's a true spirit god well if it is not working with love right if it's not if it talks negative to you and it's nothing but love it's probably not a spirit guide there are guides that are more blunt it's with love like it's with power it's with conviction it's with fire you know there's there's teachers uh, what's his name he has like the thoth tarot your highest self boundaries if you set boundaries for yourself all i want my higher self to do is take me to the best thing i've ever seen and experienced and i'm telling you i walk really close with my higher self i adore adore <laughs> i'm always reminded what's coming you know but then i also have to stay in this present be like okay i see what's coming but i have to enjoy this journey it's great though because i will tell you like at the beginning of this powerpoint i was shaken <laughs> And now I just feel free. Bye, Isla. Uh, this will be, I'm probably gonna post it on my YouTube as well. Don't worry. Um, okay. So healthy boundaries are a sign of self-respect. They show that you value and honor your own authenticity and expect the same from others. All right, we're about wrapping up here, guys. Uh, energy. Energetic benefits. This is really gonna help you guys because we, we all light workers out here. So protect your energy. It's okay to be selfish about your peace of mind. Preservation of personal energy. Boundaries act as energetic filters, allowing individuals to conserve their energy by limiting interactions with draining or negative influences. This preservation of energy enables individuals to maintain vitality and resilience in various aspects of their life. If you're not standing for yourself, who will? Protecting from energetic drain, boundaries serve as a protective shield against energetic vampires and individuals who unconsciously absorb others' energy. That was me. By especially clairsentience, you have to be very cautious of that. By setting clear limits on interactions and behaviors, individuals can shield themselves from being energetically depleted or overwhelmed by others' emotions or demand. I'm not living your life. I'm living mine. Alignment with authentic self. Boundaries support individuals in aligning with their authentic selves by honoring their values, needs, and priorities. By setting boundaries that reflect their true essence, individuals cultivate greater self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-love. 
leading to a deeper sense of inner harmony and fulfillment. You know, like I find that on this path, we just want to be authentic, right? Like we just want to live in our truth. We want to be happy. We want to be free. And by doing that is showing up with your conviction and your power and what you believe. It just literally allows everything to flow when you have a sense of self. Don't wear the mask. The show up be you, who's for you, is for you, who isn't, isn't. It's, it's as simple as that. If they don't like me being free, I obviously know that they're not free and that's a projection. Like when you start to see people's actions for what they really are, it just doesn't bother you anymore because it's just like, oh, okay, if anything, I can help that person evolve just by being me. That's the whole point. By you showing up authentic, you're then creating and inspiring somebody else to then be their authentic self. Or you're also creating a mirror to where they have to be like, oh, I'm jealous of that. You're here to trigger. You're here to inspire. You're here to do it all. <laughs> You know, creation of energetic boundaries, establishing energetic boundaries helps individuals maintain a clear and balanced energetic field, protecting them from external influences and maintaining their energetic integrity. This allows individuals to navigate diverse environments and interactions while staying grounded and center in their own energy. Very important. Um, that's even knowing how to show up in a room, right? Like I know who I am before I walk in. So like, you know how you'll be feeling happy, right? You go into environment and then you start feeling icky. You talk to somebody and you start feeling sad. You have to become aware of these things, okay? I want you to check yourself before you go into environments and you will you will be thankful for this, okay? Because if I can then pinpoint, oh, my energy was altered. That person just altered my energy. This environment is altering my energy. That tells me that my energy isn't strong enough. Like my, my awareness to how I felt before I came in, I allowed somebody to infiltrate my feeling. I should be a ball of light in here because I'm happy. But now I'm feeling sad because I'm taking on somebody else's problems and taking on their environment. Then we have encouragement of personal growth. Boundaries encourage personal growth and develop by challenging individuals to confront their fears, insecurities, and limiting, limiting beliefs. By stepping outside their comfort zones and asserting their boundaries, individuals expand their capacity for self-discovery, resilience, and self-mastery. This one's huge. Like I would say in my personal experience, this one here, self-discovery, resilience, self-mastery have all come from learning the boundaries, learning them. And, and then it pushes me into different aspects of my life, right? So you have your health, you have your wealth, you have your relationship, and you have your purpose. Well, this all trickles down through all of those. And when I'm able to have control, but also choice in what I pick, it helps with me being able to then create my reality, create who's here, how I show up every day. Do I allow these people to project on me? Do I allow these people to bring me down? Do I allow their problems to be my problems? Or do I go about my day? It also develops the sacral and throat chakra. I talked a little bit about that earlier, so I won't get too deep into that but I do think that it's interesting that the sacral chakra is boundaries and it also goes into like your sexual energy I do find those are like very important together I'm not talking like some weird like it's not weird but like you know people do like bondage stuff I'm not talking boundaries like that even though that's needed like I'm talking even just like when you're having an interaction with somebody you know a lot of the time you get swept into certain experiences because that's the agenda like if you think about how you even grew up what the music sounded like it was all about sex like I listened to some of the things that I danced to when I was a young kid I'm like what is happening what is this? it's it's weird but they go hand in hand together and so I think like them together is powerful. Powerful, you have great control. I like this. My mentality is, why would I want to be liked by someone who can't even see my value? Yes, and, and that's exactly what it is. Why am I gonna even allow you in my space? I don't deserve it. Having compassion and empathy for why someone behaves the way they do based on their experiences never means you have to tolerate their behavior or hold space for it. You can absolutely have compassion and set a boundary. This is what it means to also have compassion for yourself. This is like kind of like the parent thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I can hold space for you and you know, I know you're going through something, but like I don't need all this. It's too much, it's overwhelming, it's projecting and like, it's not. I thought this one was incredible because like most of the time we hold so much compassion for people. Like we also don't hold compassion for ourselves. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's crazy. We will hold compassion for everybody else but ourselves. And it's like, oh, I'm going through something. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, I'm terrible. Oh man, I didn't do that right. And it's like, but if it was anybody else, it's okay. You're incredible. And it's like, talk to yourself like that. Hold the compassion for yourself. And like learning these things for yourself makes you even more powerful. Then you actually understand it. Like, and we're learning these values for yourself is the hardest. That's, that's what makes this human journey like so amazing is because you're learning yourself how to develop. If you learn it for yourself, you're unstoppable. And then your purpose is protect your energy. It's okay to cancel a commitment. It's okay to not answer a call. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to not, to want to be alone. It's okay to take a day off. It's okay to do nothing. It's okay to speak up and it's okay to let go. It's all okay, literally. And if somebody's gonna be mad about it, be mad. If you wanna be mad and exert your energy in that way, I'm not gonna stop you, but I'm gonna go take that time to be alone because I need it. I'm gonna love myself. I also uh, wanna just make it aware before this started, they wanted me to talk about uh, people who do services. So you are entitled to say no to people who are looking to have your services. If you feel they are not for it, that they won't benefit from it, that they're not in the right space for it, you can say no. And we only say yes most times because of money, the lack mindset. But it really has to be known that like you are entitled to give your energy in whatever way you want to. Sometimes like we're just wasting we're just wasting our time and we know. See, and that's how it should be, but a lot of us are doing things because we care about it. It's like, oh my God, I have to I have to make this bill or I have to do this. So I'm gonna take this even though I already know. Like if I do a reading for somebody and I feel like you're not ready for it, I'm not giving you a reading. <laughs> it's just plain and simple. And that is my boundary. That is my protection as well, because I'm not gonna literally exert my energy for someone I know who is not ready, who is just doing this, you know, I'm not going to mentor someone who isn't ready. Like I had a discussion with a gentleman the other day and I was trying to, you know, talk to him about his mindset. He literally was driving himself mad because of his mindset. He had, he was not in control of his emotions. They were scattered everywhere. And I can help people with that. Like, you know, people who are saying they're schizophrenic, it is a mindset problem. And I'm talking to him and I triggered him, which is good because that showed, wow, okay, maybe I haven't look deeply into what this is I'm feeling. But he wasn't ready, he's not ready. And that was a reminder to me too. Like some of these people, they have to want it for themselves. Um. Okay, we're about to wrap up here. So if you guys have any questions, comments, I'd love to hear it. I have this cute little quote, questions are the key that unlocks the doors of understanding, which it is. We were taught like, don't ask questions. And it's like, why? I love them. I love them. So I am here. Absolutely. You know, I had wondered if I should do like an extension of this at some point, maybe in like a month to where, you know, we can bring in situations that you guys have and we can discuss them like personal situations. And I can help guide you guys on that. Um, just to kind of see where we're at, what we're struggling with, because after this class, you're going to be able to realize a lot from that, right? You know, I'm kind of like wiping your eyes a little bit in certain situations. If you'd like that, I can set something like that up and then I can bring people on and we can just have discussions about certain things that you've been through. I think that would be interesting. If nobody has any questions, I appreciate you guys for being here with me. This is so much fun. I had a really fun time putting it all together and getting ready. I was like squealing like a little, little girl before this. So it was really awesome. <laughs> but also just so you guys know, I do, you know, do mentoring. So if you're interested in something like that, just message me and I do it customized fully to you. I do a lot of different things. So that's why I like to have a consultation with people to kind of guide you to where I think I can help you at and we can discuss that. So thank you. I appreciate that. So much fun. Woo, that was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so glad you guys got some good nuggets from this. Wait, but I'm glad I made it. I'm glad you did. You made it just in time. We still had so much. You were here on divine time. Got what you needed. Is there anything else like you guys would want to see from me um, with teaching? I am open for suggestions because I'd like to do this like monthly and then upload to YouTube like a lot more of this type of stuff. Whatever you feel to share, I'm definitely open and excited to hear about. All right, we can do that. Is there anybody like into magic here? Any magic practitioners? Okay, what type of magic do you do? Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, my guides have been really wanting to put me into doing classes of magic. So I might 
dive into that. I love candle magic. That's really fun. Great listening in while I'm doing some work from home. I love you, babes. Thank you for coming out and supporting me. I appreciate that. Even though you be eating. <laughs> so Cinnabons is like my IRL friend. And she be hearing this shit all the time. Like, I'll just come in. I'll just start preaching it up. <laughs> like, I'm like, Cindy, maybe some exercises for building your intuition. Ooh. And then we'll do some space. I've been doing glamour and have me a self love oil. Let me show you something. Yeah, and the screen flickered when I. You know, I'm about to show them the oil. So I make oils and I sell them magical oils. So it's not, I'm like in the middle of LLC and getting everything together, but I make oils magic energy um, as well as fairy offerings and nature i just love putting it together but yeah this is called empress oil and it has crystals and rose in it so i am powerful in my divine feminine energy and then the intention of this oil is for self-worth power confidence compassion beauty love sensuality and fertility so i worked with the moon goddess selene on this and this was incredible because I did it in a full moon. I believe it was during Aries and it smells good. It's, mm, oh my gosh. It's vanilla and rose. And I just really wanted to incorporate the divine feminine. It looks so beautiful. Oh girl, it is. Oh, oh my God. It's a dream. Like everybody that's, I have not heard one bad thing about it. Like everyone is just like, I love it so much. It smells so good. It calms me. It's, I even have had men buy it. And that's what we really wanted. Like me and my guides, like we really wanted an oil for the divine feminine, divine masculine, where both sides could use it. And it could utilize because we are a combination and duality of the masculine and feminine. So, you know, men who have problems maybe with nurturing, you know, expressing certain parts of the feminine they will be able to yeah so um actually if you wanted we could just do self orders through me so i don't have my page uh i took it down well etsy took it down so what i'm going to do is create a website but if you're looking to get it now i do have some and I could just ship it to you. Yeah, just message me. Just message me. You guys would love it. So like even the intention with Celine, we we wanted to put all these intentions right. But the point of all those intentions was also for it to pick you. So this oil literally picks you. So whatever you are maybe in a little bit of lack of in the divine feminine, it automatically going to be a father in like a week or two. Maybe I could buy it for him. Yes. Oh my gosh, that would be actually so incredible, especially with going through that journey with his wife. That would be awesome. Yeah, just send me a message, you guys, like DM. And if you are wanting to order, they are 22. And then I would have to figure out the shipping, but that should be pretty easy. Um, but yeah, they're incredible. Mm, so good. So yeah, maybe I can do a magic class for you guys we can do like an oil together candle magic oh my god i'll show you guys this guys i have like so <laughs> i'm obsessed with magic shipping to europe you will have to get it through Duane. okay that won't be a problem i'm down for the reset so <laughs> i have this special place for my kids i know we're getting to other stuff but you guys are here we're here should we just get into another chat so we can like all chat it says loves philosophy <laughs> I have so many. What color you need, honey? I'll be passing it out for the class. Did you do a cl class on Kalima? I would love that. Oh my God. I would love that. I have her hanging up on my wall. I also do. This is incredible. I connect with her so much through this deck. Oh, I love her so much. That's like my mom. This is like my mom. Like if I'm going through something, I'm like, I ate my time to like two Eastern. I best not that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll do one on Kali. She, she's helped me through a lot. Like shadow work and stuff like that is very like deep with her. I wonder if the card's in here because there's a specific card where she tells me when I'm going through like deep work with her and it's it's incredible oh my god all these cards are hurt oh here it is this one's like of shadow work and it's like talking about her like walking hand in hand with you you know walking through the fire and the shadow and there's nothing like it like you can tell just in my voice changing it it's just she is so much love and i feel so protected with her she just oh you guys want to join the earth chat let's join the earth chat oh mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh you want to see it yeah i got you i can even send like a here let's go into earth chat and i'll send a picture of it so that way you can like keep it if you'd like connect with it 